Let's talk about the leaderboard. Welcome back to another Bit Legend video, fellas. So if you want to find the new NPC that was added into the game, I'm going to start you off over here at the quest campaign NPC. We're going to go, what is this, west, past Colby. We've talked about him, I think, when the, when the patch came out. And uh, where is Lower Legend? I feel like he's in here somewhere. All right, let me, let me stay focused. Stay focused. So you're going west from the quest over to Colby, and you keep going, and you're walking, and you're walking, and hey, look, there he is. I don't know why it pathed me all the way over there, but whatever, so click on the guy with the little Lucha Libre helmet looking thing, and he's got the leaderboard icon over his head, and here you go. I think it walks you south intentionally, that way you're not standing on the NPC so other people can click them, but that's an assumption, I don't know. Uh, so let's take a look, we're going to look through uh, and show a little bit of, this is kind of like a, a time capsule thing, where you can see uh, what total stats everybody had, what the rankings were in patch 063, and we'll talk about some guilds and what items people are using and whatnot. But if you want to grab your little piece of glory, Get your total stats up here, jump up here. Hopefully in the future we'll see different metrics for the leaderboard, but I'm very happy to have this added in the game. And then also, I do hope that it will expand to 100 and maybe um, 250 players and so on, we'll see. Um, but anyway, so this is the guy, you click on him, it walks you down, and then boom. So let's start it off with the biggest boy of all, Naira, the GM of the Bit Cartel Guild, which is part of the Unity Alliance. So let's start off over here. So you're gonna see this a lot, the bow and arrow. Bow and arrow is super, super popular for uh, DPS equips. Bow and arrow and the drum kit are the number one and number two most popular um, DPS items. The main reason is because they have a ton of crit. And crit works very well with the bounty hunter talents because there's talents where you um, you gain SP when you crit. There's also talents that you gain SP at the start of the battle, so they're getting a ton of SP. And then what are you going to do with all that SP? You are going to use your full launch skill. So crit's going to do a ton of damage, but it's also going to give you a ton of SP, which is going to give you a ton of damage. It's an incredibly fun play style, and it is very, very powerful, as you might imagine. With the pets right now, you're basically going to use whatever legendary offensive pet you get. If you get two, then you can be picky and all that kind of stuff. Um, we have seen the wording change on pets over time where it says self-attack. What that means is um, the damage of your pet is based off of your attack stat. And if you look at my pet in comparison, the healing of your pet is based off of your attack stat as well. So definitely keep that in mind. The wording was confusing in the past. It has been fixed in the future. Keep an eye out for if they change different things um, and maybe add different types. There's been talk of adding a stamina-based pet. So if, if you're a tank with high stamina, you have a pet that heals based off your stamina, you can imagine how powerful that would be. But anyways, so just use what you got. If you have a pet that uses the same damage type as you, so if, if this is cold, his weapon I think is photon, um, if they were the same type, you could stack that damage bonus, which would be mathematically very, very strong. But, you know, we'll, we'll keep it relatively simple. As far as the weapon, so a mythic weapon is going to have the exact same skills as the legendary weapon of the same type. So this is a saber. It will have the exact same skills as a legendary saber. The only difference is the bonuses and more stats and things like that. You're seeing the plus 11 up top because that is the refine... Uh, mechanic there's a new NPC in the game that once you back your weapon as long as it's quality 9 at least a mythic a set um, and I think it's is it only mythic and set maybe legendaries I think it's only mythic and set but anyways um, you can continue to add stats to it and I'll talk about that a little bit more in depth possibly another video but we did cover it when uh, 063 came out as well so you can add more stats if you want at a cost of course this is the offhand from the Raid 6. These are both from Raid 6, as you can tell. Same thing with the headpiece. 
So obviously he's been doing a lot of raid six. Let's uh, take a look at the skills real quick and explain why this is such an attractive weapon because it is so popular. This is basically what everybody's running in raid eight right now. Um, closest enemy, most things have a, a closest enemy skill. A one SP closest enemy, is, closest enemy is one of the highest um, damage multipliers and one SP works really well with the full launch because with the full launch ability, it, um, it gives you a bunch of SP, then it uses your skills, but it won't use healing. So since this weapon has a lot of healing skills, it's most likely gonna spam this one SP closest, and you're gonna do a ton of damage. Um, you're gonna actually use this skill eight times, which is massive damage. It's a really awesome mechanic. Um, going down here, you have a heal and shield target ally. This is really good. I use this to start off raids. So let's say we're doing raid eight and the, the damage is so high in raid eight that it can just one shot people. So what you wanna do is you, since you don't have a lot of SP when it starts, you're gonna use the one SP to put shielding on your tank. And if you have another player on the team that has this, you probably wanna shield your second slot as well, whether a tank or not. That way you're getting some shields out early, then they'll survive to round two and then somebody else on your team should have enough SP so they can use the three SP lightsaber five down here, which puts shield on your entire team. So that's what's going on. You got a lot of shielding. Um, this three SP skill is one of the reasons why DPS are able to survive so long against guild boss four with all that attack random and attack team damage because they can keep shields maxed on the whole team all the time. You know, using this skill once, you're probably gonna max everybody's shields. And you're probably full heal everybody as well. It's a powerful skill if you have a lot of crit and crit damage. And over here, um, attack power to two closest enemies. Again, it's a closest skill, pretty high uh, damage on it. You know, but you're hitting two targets, it's all good. And then the mount, you know, don't worry about the mount. So I'm gonna take a lot of time explaining this build and then other builds are gonna be similar to it and then we'll just kind of fly through everybody relatively quick and hopefully if you're on the leaderboard, you'll get, you have some time to shine. Um, as far as bonuses, we talked about crit. You also want crit damage. Um, most boys are trying to aim for at least 300 crit damage and more is always better as long as you have around 80 plus crit, you're happy with it. Um, with 65 to 70% crit, you'll start to see the, the bounty hunter build start to make a lot of sense. Um, but once you get like 75, 80% crit, some people even go higher than that. Um, you're just gonna have that consistency that's gonna be really good. But here, so as you look at you know, most of these items, he's using this mainly for the skills, but the crit damage is good. Here you see more crit damage, crit damage, crit, speed. There is, I think it's a necklace that's um, quality eight that's, that's fairly popular here. Um, a lot of DPS players are choosing. It's either a necklace or the back piece, I don't remember. Um, but a lot of DPS players are choosing to use a lower tier item because it has higher bonuses. And then hopefully with uh, gear from Raid 7, Raid 8, Guild Boss loot, hopefully that you'll find something a little bit sweeter in there. But I'll talk about more end game builds maybe in the future. I'll, I could go through like a best in slot list, but I kind of want to show what people are using right now. And then here, crit damage, of course. With the mount, you want to get as much crit damage as possible because crit damage here can go up to 100. Um, if you can get a secondary bonus on it, that is great. So crit, crit damage would be pretty much optimal, but if you use a photon weapon, if you get crit damage in the photon, um, this is a good spot for it. And then let's just run through. Does he have good amps? Basically, you want any double bonuses. Like, this is amazing. This is amazing because he uses photon. Crit, crit damage, and then damage of your weapon type and triple damage. Also, going back to the bow and arrow, um, Drum kit was more popular originally, but we had a, in a, a week or so where triple damage was kind of messing up crit for a little bit. That has been resolved, so it's not a big deal anymore, but that's one of the reasons why bow and arrow became so popular, because people started switching to using it. Or if you already had a bow and arrow and you're waiting for drum kit, a lot of people said, all right, whatever, I'm just gonna upgrade the bow and arrow. So you can go either way on this, no, no big deal. And just to clarify one more time, the triple damage issue has been pretty much resolved. As far as here, you want crit or crit damage on the brain. Once you roll one of those things, you are pretty much good to go. Again, if you have um, a weapon, like a photon weapon, and you get photon damage here, you might be able to just to chill out and just be happy with that roll and not have to worry about brain-like chips anymore. But crit, crit damage, speed's not bad, but you're gonna use what you got.
And that's that. So we took a long time on Naira. Let's run through. Everyone's going to be pretty similar, and uh, we're just going to run on through. So this is the healer weapon. <laughs> the healer set weapon. Why the healer set has damage reduction on it. That's a conversation for another day, fellas. That's a conversation for another day. And they change the name back to damage reduce instead of damage mitt. But anyways, you're seeing some similarities here. Crab Helmet can drop in raids 6, 7, and 8. Um, yeah, it's got decent bonuses. So nothing too groundbreaking here. All this stuff's pretty much the same. Different pet. You know, this one's cool because it's got photon damage, and his weapon has photon damage, so he can stack that a little bit. Crit and critical, beautiful mount here. Let's see. Dun, 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 dun. The amps might not seem like a big deal, but I tell you what, man, they really make the difference. As a tank, I totally felt it when I got that fifth amp, and then when I switched from single bonus amps to double bonus amps. And as a DPS player, you're going to feel it as well. Critical, that's beautiful. And then crit and crit damage as you need, etc. You're starting to see the pattern a little bit, so we can keep speeding up. Gibby did a massive jump recently. Um, physical damage is interesting. So um, the damage percentages are different on this, but also with physical damage, I, the only damage bonus that increases physical damage is just basic damage bonus, but basic damage bonus works on all other types. So physical damage doesn't have, does, it's not gonna benefit from like, you know, plus 25% photon damage. But like I said, um, I wouldn't spend a lot of time and resources digging on offensive pets. Just get whatever legendary you get and just ride with it until the foreseeable future. And then again, this is the legendary version of the same weapon we've been seeing. And just to prove it to you guys, it has the same skills. It's the same. Are the percentages the same? That's a good question. Let's look at lightsaber five. It goes up from 75 to 93. Are the percentages different? Because I know the skills are the same. It's the same. Same percentages. So you're just getting a better item, but the percents are the same. And here, going for some crit on the offhand. Or that's got crit there, then crit on the offhand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're seeing a pattern. This is the new mount. It's got a three SP attack target skill. But here he's got beautiful rolls, crit, crit damage. Can't complain at that. And then what do you think we're going to see? Crit, crit damage, crit, crit damage. Da, 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 da. Beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff. Dun, 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 dun. Double bonuses, etc. All right. You get the idea. Pretty much the same thing. This is from Raid 8. So Raid 8 Mythics can drop. They cost like 200 Lost Cores to upgrade it plus one. I don't know if that, if that has been updated or changed or anything like that, but to upgrade these things is crazy. But look at that, 5% crit bonus. So if you're thinking that you, the only gear that you want is in, in Guild Boss, you really want to look at Raid 8. It, um, I've talked about it. I showed the loot when I did the Raid 8 video. But uh, there's some juicy stuff in there. The stats are comparable to set items. You can add it up here if you want. 5, 6, 7, 8. It's 800, right? Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's over 800 total stats here. I think my item is um, like 750, something like that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm around 750. Um, his item's at 800, so more total stats on the rate eight pieces as well. But they do vary a little bit. But look at that. So you're not only stuck to using set items, unless you're a tank, and then you know, not a lot of options out there. But that's good to see. What do you think you're going to see? Oh, he's got that item drop chip. I'm sure he's working on that. Speed, speed, crit damage, crit damage. So you know what you're going for, but you use what you got. And that's a beautiful offhand. Probably only one in the game. All right, so some variety here. This is the first one that's a little bit different. So he is not going to be a bounty hunter. He, I believe he's still Kung Fu. And this is the only Thunder Fury in the game. The world first and the only one existing, and it's already upgraded all the way. So if you want, you can add the stats. So just keep in mind, it is refined at six times. So it's going to have that bonus total stats on there. But beautiful item. If you want to see his skills, here you go. Um, it's been reported, at least he said that the autopilot uses a zero SP attack target against like the front enemy every time. So who knows? Autopilot's going to do what autopilot's going to do. But uh, yeah, I've talked a little bit more about this in a longer video when I was talking about Thunder Fury. But hey. There you go. Beautiful stats. 
And I think we saw this one before. Yeah, physical. So he's kind of doing this thing. I'm super jealous of his legendary damage reduction brain. <laughs> but there you go. A little bit of a hybrid, whether that's intentional or not. I don't know. Hey, this is the quality nine amplifier that you can get from the new world boss. So there you go. Look at that. It's a beautiful thing. I still haven't dropped one of these, but I haven't really pushed a, a serious push into it. Let's see if there's any more right. So Chinese, the highest total stats tank at the moment. We have the same offhand. We got the same main hand. We got the same this one. Uh, I got more damage reduction than you, boy. <laughs> so highest total stats, he's still over 4K. Um, he is rocking this item. I am not a big fan of the set equipment. I, I want to test it before I go make a big opinion now. Um, I said I didn't really like the, the the skill breakdown of the goddess, but her stats are so good and her bonus is so good that she's, she's still doing twice as much damage as a swordsman for minions. So I definitely want to, if I'm theorizing on something, I want to make it clear, if it, but I want to hold most of my judgment until I've tested something. I do have this item, but just based off the stats, man, damage reduction, absorb, so consistent, so defensive. This one's gonna give you a bunch of hit points, but you're still gonna take a ton of damage. You know, I don't think dodge saves that. I don't think block saves that. I don't think this extra 10% hit point bonus saves that. So I'm not seeing it. If the devs have a vision here of something, I am not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Hit point percentage, like, it's better than nothing? I don't know. If my pet healed based off of my hit points, then this would be interesting to me, but I don't know. I'm hanging on to it. I'm going to test it out at some point, but mm, I don't know. That's another, that's another rant for another day. And then here, Blue Fire Dragon heals the weakest ally. Um, I actually had this, and I tested it out a little bit, and for me, it just kept rolling too low for me to use it. The fire hoof's consistent. I'm gonna get that 86%, and I'm gonna hit two people. So even if the fire hoof rolls the lowest possible, I'm gonna hit two people for 86%. That's pretty good. And on average, I'm gonna be around 100. Hitting two people for 100, that's awesome. Over here, it's just not gonna be consistent. When you want healing, you want consistency. That's one of the reasons why I like a healing pet that has a higher percentage, but um, I'll take a lower heal as long as I have a high percentage, so that way I know the heals are coming consistently. Almost every other attack, we're gonna get the heals in. Um, so I like that, but just, you know, what if you need that heal and you get 20%, which is like nothing. So it feels bad. Um, but since it heals one person, if, you, if your entire team dies, like you see with me almost all the time, um, if you're, it's focusing heals into one. So if you, if you got to solo something as a tank, I mean, hey, this pet's pretty attractive. But um, for me, they would have to make the, um, make the minimum here like 100, and you could chop off some of the high end. Because getting 320 percent is going to sound like it's an amazing heal, like, oh, man, it's awesome. But in reality, it's probably going to be wasted over healing as well, you know? So even when you roll high, you don't really get the benefit of rolling high. But still, it'll get the job done. People use him in content. Um, a lot of people are using uh, me as a front tank and him as a second tank in raid 8. And I do think, even though I showed the video of just doing it with a solo tank, when we get to autopilot, I do think that the autopilot meta is going to be two tanks in the front, three DPS in the back. DPS damage is so high that you don't really need four DPS if one one or two guys can kill the entire wave. Um, it's just gonna, that's just how it is. Let's take a look at these chips. So like me, he hasn't hit 200 yet. Um, single bonus, double bonus there, that's good. Double bonus, oh man, that's really good. I'm jealous of that. Single bonus, single bonus. So I guess he's cap and block, which makes sense. I mean, this has block on it. And then what's that mount got? Block, photon damage, boy. So for those of you um, who are questioning, should you reroll your mount? I would say right now, probably not. If you have something that is viable, something that is getting it done, sit on the mount that you have until you have enough nuggets set aside to max out your best in slot items. So for me, 
Um, he's got everything maxed here, but for me, I'm missing a bunch of upgrades. Um, I would still wait for those best in slot items before I start re-rolling and using all my nuggets on rolling mounts and things like that. So if this caps his block, he's good to go. Doesn't need to worry about doing the re-roll game a hundred times and burning through all his nuggets. But once you have like 500 nuggets set aside, which is what I'm getting close to, then you might want to consider, you know, rolling that mount around. And then what he's got, he's got dodge, damage reduction, damage reduction, reflect, block. And I'm thinking, I wish you could see there, if you could just click on their little um, info button, I wish you could just see and uh, what their bonuses are, because like if you're going to use him, you'd have to either ask him or manually add up all the block he has, and then like, are you capped or not? You know, all that kind of stuff. What else? Who who else on here is unique? Deluxe is another tank. He is running the block Libra, so he's doing block. Um, with this pet, it's a good pet, but uh, nine times out of ten, um, healing is going to be better. That's just kind of the way it works out for because um, I've used this pet before. Wookie ran this pet for a while, and the healing was just so much more consistent. I think I actually had this pet too. The healing was much more consistent for me um, because the healing always seemed to go where it needed to go. The shielding on this one, even though it says weakest allies, I, I don't know if weakest means whoever has the lowest shielding and just ignores their hit points or if it's based off hit points. I don't know. Um, but my experience with the shielding pet, it's good. It'll get it done. But um, I had much better, more consistent results with, uh, with Healing Pet. And that's why I run what I run. He has got the Tank Necklace. This is something I absolutely want. It's got good bonuses there, even though it's another hit points. But I'm gonna, <laughs> I'll leave it alone. But beautiful item. Beautiful item. What else? Got the same stuff. Let's look at the mount. Oh, that's a beautiful mount. I'm super jealous of this mount. That... That's a, a beautiful amount to hear. Um, obviously, he would probably want less speed stat or agility on the roll, but I wouldn't even sweat it. Having a little bit of agility on your tank ain't the end of the world. Those are beautiful bonuses there. Absorber and damage reduction, that's awesome. Let's take a look. Damage reduction, that's awesome, that's awesome. Not bad, not bad. Deluxe doing things. There are other tanks in the game than me. Who else has an interesting different build? I think the video is getting long. Let me just wrap it up on me. And as you've kind of seen in comparison, we're going for a damage reduction absorb build. Mathematically, it is the best tank build possible. Mathematically, you can't, you can't deny it. Um, damage reduction reduces the damage you're gonna have and it's gonna be very consistent. It caps at 70%. And with absorb, it turns damage that's incoming into shields, which means effectively you get more hit points, you're almost healing yourself. And then the shielding that you get is also, the damage that, that is done to the shielding that you get is also reduced by damage reduction. So if you multiply that out and multiply that out and the effective hit points or the effective amount of damage it would take to kill you, it's quite high. So we're running around like 20 to 25% absorb, which is a little bit excessive, but I, I gotta say it's, it's, it, makes it, it makes you happy when it happens. Um, other stuff, I, I could upgrade these things and I'm, I'm thinking about it, however, um, if I get a Mythic out of Raid 8, like the helmet's the only thing I'd be interested in, um, it's going to take a ton of cores to upgrade it, so mm, I don't know, we'll see, we'll, just, we'll sandbag our TS for a little bit longer, but I do have a bunch of things that are ready to go, a bunch of uh, nuggets that are ready to go to upgrade uh, any potential guild boss drops. So, like I said before, um, save your nuggets until you have a surplus that you can upgrade all the stuff that you need, and then anything excess to that, then you can go and mess with your mount and roll your mount. Um, what I would probably do is I might even roll a second mount and then re-roll that until it's good, and then upgrade it because I have a surplus of mount materials. Or I could just wait and see um, what's happening. We've seen the cosmetics of the mythic mounts, and I'll show that now. Um, we've seen those cosmetics uh, in-game, and we just haven't seen the items released yet. So if you scroll all the way to the bottom, and you look here, so you see my red mount. The next one's another legendary. If you drop down to the row, so right here at the top, this entire row, they're all mythic mounts. These ones, I can't click them or anything, but the row at the top right now, they're all mythic mounts. 
So we know that they kind of exist, they're kind of in the game, they've been used in advertising pictures and things like that. Uh, we don't know how to get them yet, but it means that mythic mounts exist. So you either, you have two options. You can just sit on all your mount materials and just wait and see if slash when these are revealed um, officially, or you can go out there and roll new mounts and just say YOLO and go whatever with it. All the mounts at the bottom two rows are going to be just cosmetic stuff that you can get in the, the pack store from time to time. But five mythic mounts exist, and we don't know anything. We have seen a picture. They have three bonuses instead of two bonuses. So for me, I have two bonuses because of legendary. They would have three. Um, don't know if their stats are any better. If you look at these stats, if you add up the stats on the, on the mount, they're horrible. They're very, very low. Um, it's basically the, the total stats on a legendary mount is basically the same number of total stats on a Q9 epic item. If you add this up, it's like 360. If you add this up, it's like 360. So I'm hoping that mythic mounts really bridge the gap. You know, if, I'm, if I've got a, a, like a legendary mythic item on my character that is, you know, supposed to be comparable to whatever tier I'm in, I guess I'm, I'm saying it weird, but you get it. You know, I want it to have at least this much total stats preferably this much total stats. So maybe mythic mounts solve that situation. But anyways, this video is long enough. I think you guys get it. That's kind of what the meta is and showing you guys some, some, of the pe some of the folks in the top 50. I do hope this is expanded. If you feel left out, let me just roll through everybody real quick. But you've seen the common DPS builds, you've seen the common tank builds, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, fellas, as always, I appreciate you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.